Hey guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, we're going to be doing something super fun. Today, we're going to talk about beauty products that YouTube forgot about. In this video, I will be outlining 10 products that I could not hear enough about. Only a couple of years ago, everybody was just raving about them. The funny thing is I still have most of these products in my collection and the ones that I don't have, I've tried and used up. So I will just put a picture of them in the video so you guys can see what they look like. This video is inspired by my friend Puffin's wife, her name is Mel and she did a video a couple of days ago just outlining products that she thought that YouTube also forgot about. So I will link her video as well in the description box. And without further ado, let's get into it. The first product I wanna talk about is actually a primer that so many people kept talking about back in the day and I rarely see it being talked about now. So this is the Urban Decay Primer Potion. I have the one in the shade Minor Sin, which is not the original primer potion that everybody kept talking about, which is in the purple packaging, but this was the primer that everybody had. I got the original one as my first one, and then I got Minor Sin because it's just a little bit of a different color. Mine is actually getting kind of old, as you guys can see, but this is a beautiful, like, pinky nude shimmer primer, and this is the one I currently have in my collection, but this one is getting old as well because I don't typically use this one anymore. The one that I typically use is my Smashbox Eye Primer. I love that one as of lately, so this one has kind of been gathering dust, but this is the first product that I want to tell you guys about because I never hear people talk about the Urban Decay primer potions anymore. The next product is by Laura Mercier and this is the powder that everybody had back in the day. Comment down below if you guys remember that but I feel like this was the first loose powder that I even heard about. When I was getting into makeup I was like oh I need to set my face so this is the first thing that I purchased. Since I have discovered I do like pressed powders a little bit better but this one is still a nice one. I have normal to oily skin and in my oily areas in particular this does help keep the oils at bay so that I really appreciate but since I have really enjoyed my Charlotte Tilbury airbrush flawless powders instead those are pressed and those are what I typically use now but this is still one that is a bestseller at Sephora's site I keep seeing it on their bestsellers list so people are obviously still buying it but I never hear about it on YouTube anymore the next part is also a primer but this is for your face this is the Smashbox photo finish primer and this is one that I don't think anybody talks about anymore but this is one I actually still use a lot. So I actually have some monstrous pores kind of up in here in my face, right by my nose and underneath my eye. They are quite large and this is probably the only thing that does the best job at masking it. It's just such a good primer. I do love my Makeup Forever smoothing primer as well. That one is really nice, but this one I've probably repurchased now three times. If you had to mattify your skin, this was the product to do it, but now it's just seemed to kind of fallen off the map. <laughs> Next, I want to talk about MAC and Puffin's Wife also also talked about MAC in her video. She talked about the MAC lipsticks and how they've kind of fallen off the map and I completely agree with her on that. But there's also another MAC product that I think has fallen off the map as well that nobody seems to talk about anymore and that is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural Pressed Powders. That was definitely my first pressed powder. I used to buy that one all of the time. I really liked it. My shade was in Light Plus and that was actually a really nice product for me. I remember when I was first getting into makeup that it was really easy to use. I definitely enjoyed it a lot and I do think now my Charlotte Tilbury pressed powders have replaced it but it's still an amazing product. It's just that nobody seems to talk about it anymore so that's another one that's kind of interesting to me. Next I want to talk about Becca highlighters and the Champagne Pop collaboration with Jaclyn Hill is definitely one that everybody used to talk about a lot but I want to talk about the highlighter that kind of came before Champagne Pop. This little baby was the highlight that Becca was known for. This this is opal and this is one that nobody talks about anymore as well. It's a gorgeous shade as you guys can see. I absolutely love it and I've made quite a dent. There's definitely, you know, the pan is kind of coming through. It hasn't been hit yet but it's close and they have recently kind of revamped opal and brought in royal glow and royal glow is opal with a little bit of a bronzy twist so it's a little bit different but this is a classic. Nobody seems to talk about it anymore. Honestly I wear this a lot still. I think it's a flattering shade for my skin tone and for for many actually. And this is definitely one that I wish got more hype than it does because before Champagne Pop, it was opal and this is freaking amazing. Next, let's talk about the Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow palettes. So before Norvina, which is obviously the latest buzzworthy palette and then before Soft Glam and then before 
the Mario collaboration, there was this guy. This is the Modern Renaissance palette, and this is another one that I feel like nobody uses anymore. There's actually a couple shades in the Modern Renaissance palette that were duplicated in the Soft Glam. If you love pinks, purples, and neutrals, this is a perfect palette for you, but I do feel like nobody seems to talk about it anymore, nor does anybody use it on their channels anymore. I actually am guilty of this as well. I found it in the bottom of my drawers, and I was like, oh yeah, this little baby. <laughs> I totally forgot about you, but it is a beautiful palette and I think it's still a bestseller on Sephora, but this is another one where I was like, come on guys, talk about this one more. It's really beautiful. Speaking of eyeshadows, the next thing that I wanna talk about that has completely fallen off the map is the Urban Decay Naked Palettes. So when I first started getting into makeup, the first eyeshadow palette I ever bought was the Naked One. It was a nice neutral palette and for me, pretty easy to use as a beginner. I did end up retiring mine and decluttering it because it was so super old, but nowadays they've of course expanded the Naked range to Naked 2, 3, and then there's Naked Heat as well. Naked palettes were the thing back then, and they've definitely completely dropped off. The next product was completely hyped by Kim Kardashian, and I actually did purchase it when it was super hyped as well. This was the first product that I picked up from Tatcha's line, and it is the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist. This was also one that Jaclyn Hill was raving about as well, so I definitely wanted to pick it up, and a lot of people raved about it after she did as well. It was such a beautiful like setting mist. It gave you that dew. For my skin type, I did have to go pretty easy on that spray because it can really get greasy pretty quickly, but it's definitely a beautiful product. And since the hype has gone down, I haven't really heard much about it anymore. My MAC Fix Plus is definitely the setting spray that I use the most. It is definitely a holy grail for me. So I found that once I used up my Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist myself, I didn't repurchase it because it wasn't one I was reaching for a lot. Next, I want to talk about the bronzer that I kept hearing about over and over again. It's one that is still a classic, but I no longer have it in my collection either. I just haven't repurchased it. It is the Laguna Bronzer from NARS. This is one that I remember hearing about all of the time on YouTube. When I first started getting into makeup, it was like drilled into me that the NARS Orgasm Blush was the blush you needed and the NARS Laguna Bronzer was the bronzer you needed. I remember back in the day, I got the Duo Pan, so it had both the Orgasm and the Laguna bronzer in the same pan. Super handy and I really enjoyed it as well. It was definitely one that I got a lot of good use out of, but I haven't seen really talked about at all on YouTube in the last few years. So it's definitely been replaced, of course, probably with some other favorites. I personally have a lot of favorites now that I haven't really thought about going back to Laguna for because I was also so young. So maybe I should go ahead and swatch it again and just see what it's like. But honestly, that is another one that I never hear spoken about anymore. The last product I want to talk about that I feel like nobody is anymore is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. This was one that actually holds some personal sentiment to me because it's the foundation I wore on my wedding day. So it's so special that way for me. And it was also my very first high-end foundation in general. I honestly think it's amazing. This foundation as well has an amazing shade range, which I absolutely love. The inclusivity is definitely there. And this is definitely before Fenty Beauty as well. So I think Makeup Forever should have much more credit for being inclusive than they do. But anyways, as I was thinking about this foundation recently, I was thinking about maybe going and purchasing it again because I remember it looking so stunning on my skin and it's literally been years since I've picked it up. Anyways, guys, let me know down below what are some items that you think were super hyped up that nobody talks about anymore. This was definitely a fun video to think about and to film because it really got me reminiscing about when I first started getting into makeup and what was super popular back then. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to let me know by giving it a big thumbs up as well as don't forget to subscribe on your way out for more high-end and luxury makeup type videos and until my next one guys take care and thanks so much for watching bye you and me everything that we've been through has made us strong you won't believe we've had our great but sorry there's a light inside of us it shows the way